companies have two major sources of finance debt and equity but we will particularly focus on debt financing and in debt financing in particular bonds a bond in terms of finance is a legal agreement between the borrower and the lender which mentions that the borrower promises to repay the borrowed amount along with the interest to the lender in this borrowers could be private companies government or other entities now the reasons they borrow could be to finance some new projects or for their ongoing operations so there are few components mentioned in a bond contract which includes frequency of coupons coupon rate the tenure of a bond and its maturity value now as per an investor's objective they can choose to invest in bonds based on different maturities currencies different coupons types of issuers and many other categories but in this video we'll particularly see how bonds are classified based on coupons first one is fixed coupon this is a very simple one in this they pay a fixed interest amount at specified time intervals over the entire duration of the bond now the coupon frequency can be annual semi annual or even quarterly for example a company issues four year semi annual bond at 6% which means it will pay a fixed 6% every 6 months for all four years second type is zero coupon bonds as the name suggests these bonds don't pay any coupons instead they just pay face value at the maturity now the reasons why investors buy these bonds despite not receiving coupons is that they are issued at a discounted price discount means the price is lower than the face value of the bond so basically investor buys the bond at 700 and receives 1000 at maturity the difference of 300 is the return earned by an investor for holding the bond with no coupons received during the life of the bond floating rate bonds floating means variable rates in this bonds make regular coupon payments but the amount paid is not fixed in fact it depends on the market rate of interest for example it can be based on repo rates or reverse repo rates this means coupon payments increase or decrease with the increase or decrease in the benchmark rates additionally they promise to pay some interest margin over the floating rate let's take an example suppose a company issues floating rate bond for the face value of rupees 1000 coupon rate equals floating rate plus additional margin floating rate here is based on national savings certificate total tenure is for 4 years and floating rates are reset annually nsc rate in the first year is 8.5% so the coupon rate is 8.5% plus the additional margin that is 0.3% gives us 8.8% multiplying this with the face value gives us the coupon amount of rupees 88 this is the amount that is paid at the end of the first year for the second year coupon will be based on the nsc second year rate and this is how the coupons will be reset annually for all the four years deferred bonds word defer means to postpone or delay so in the context of bonds word defer means investors do not receive regular coupon payments in fact payments start in the future after a period or they may receive it even at the maturity because of deferred payments a these bonds are issued at a discounted price that is price lesser than the face value b they carry a higher rate of interest suppose our eight year deferred coupon bond having a face value of 1000 is issued at 900 they may start paying coupons from the fifth year onwards at the rate of let's say 6.5% that means no coupons for the first four years from the fifth year onwards coupon amount of rupees 65 is paid annually for the remaining four years and on maturity face value along with the coupon will be paid The reason why investors buy this bond is because it's issued at a discounted price. It has a higher coupon rate and delayed tax. Delayed tax because investors don't receive initial coupons, so no income tax in the initial years. Next is step up bond. When the bond's coupon rates step up, meaning it increases over time, is known as a step up bond. So initially it starts with a lower coupon rates which keep increasing as per the pre-specified schedule. Now the extent to which the rates will increase how frequently it will increase and the timing will all depend on the terms of the bond there is one more thing that the increase in the rates is not related to the market rates now the structure of this bond is such that suppose there is a step up bond having an initial coupon rate of 3% which increases by 0.5% each year or it can also be like coupon rate is 5% for the initial 3 years and later it increases to 7% for the remaining 5 years the major benefit to an investor for investing in step up bonds is their increasing coupon rates but there is also a disadvantage that in the rising interest rate environment 
increase in the coupon rate may not be directly related to the increase in the market rate, which is why investors may miss out on the chance of earning higher coupons. Next one is payment in kind bond. Now this is a very different one. So instead of paying coupons in cash, it is paid in the form of an additional debt. We'll understand it with an example. Suppose a company takes 1 million loan by issuing payment in kind bond. The loan term is for 2 years and the coupon rate is 10%. At the end of first year, the coupon payment owed by the company is 1 lakh. Now instead of paying the interest, it gets added to the outstanding principal amount. So the total principal amount at the end of first year comes to 1.1 million. In the same way, even the second year coupon amount gets added increasing the principal amount to 1.2 million. So we can see that there is no cash paid during the entire bond duration. In fact, the cash is paid only at maturity, which includes all the accrued interest or we can say accumulated interest and the principal amount. And the last one is inflation indexed bonds. So we know inflation reduces the value of money. Therefore, these bonds help investors protect against inflation. So how it works is, Bonds are linked to some inflation index like consumer price index or wholesale price index so that any adjustment in the inflation is reflected in the returns of the bond. So this is an example where the principal amount is adjusted for inflation. Suppose an investor decides to invest 10,000 in an inflation index bond for 3 years at a coupon rate of 4.5%. If the inflation rises by 2%, the principal amount will be adjusted from 10,000 to 10,200 and the coupon is calculated on the basis of this adjusted principle. That is, 10,200 into coupon rate gives us 459. In the next year, if the inflation goes to 2.5%, the adjusted principal value will be 10,455. And accordingly, the coupon amount equals 470.5. Similarly, there will also be a type where the principal amount is fixed and only coupons are adjusted for inflation. Okay, so these were the types of bonds based on different coupon structures and hope you have understood them all. See you with another topic. Thank you.